Oh, sweet God of the baby Jesuses. Look at this little spicy gordita. Man, the first time I took this bike out of the box. Just in my pants. Man, every time I go for a ride and I look at these hubs. Just in my pants. Okay, okay, I'll stop with all the nonsense. I just ride in my pants every time you're next to me. All right, today I'm gonna do a quick overview for you guys of my 2021 Common Saw Meta AM Essential build in gunmetal. Look at that color. Is that beautiful or what? I'll do a separate video on ride characteristics, but today I'll just do a quick overview for you guys. Also, I don't have a script for this, so this is all just coming off the top of my head. So if you hear me pause, it's just me trying to recall a number or a fact about the bike. So let's start up here at the front. Bars and stem are ride alpha. Basically Common Saul's in-house brand stuff. It's pretty decent. I wouldn't worry about having to upgrade. Stem length is 40 mils. Bar width is 780 mils, and bar rise is 27 mils. I also like the little cable clips they use right here. A little C on them for common sole. That's pretty dope. Oh, also when I pulled the bike out of the box, all the cables are cut correctly to size. So you don't have a lot of extra cable sticking out so it doesn't look all dorky. Grips are right alpha. And I actually like these grips. I'm surprised because I normally upgrade grips when I first get a, a bike but these grips are sticky and soft, so I like them. And it actually has a hard plastic bar in, so if you ever crash, or you just wanna lay your bike over on its side real quick, it actually hits this hard plastic piece instead of rubbing against the soft rubber and tearing that up. So you should be able to get some longevity out of these grips. Let's see, brakes are SLX. Oh, and this is a full SLX build, so you have your SLX brakes, and then down below, it does come with the four piston calipers, front and back. And then rotor size is 203 millimeters front and back. So you have plenty of stopping power. Let's talk about the fork. Fox 38 performance, 170 mils of travel. Fork has a 44 millimeter offset. And it does have the grip dampener, so you have your firm, medium, and open settings. One thing I don't like about the performance version of this fork is it doesn't have little air bleeders on the back. But for 25 bucks, you can actually buy them and install them. It's pretty basic. This little cap just unscrews with an Allen key, and then you just ins install the new air bleeder. So at least they make it easy to upgrade. See, so rims and the hubs. I did upgrade these. But the bike does come with DT Swiss E532 rims and Formula Hubs, which is another in-house brand for Common Cell. But I didn't like the engagement on that rear hub, so I upgraded. And I went with Industry 9 Hubs, and that's the gold color. And I had them lace up the Stans Flow EX3 rims. Let's move on to the shock. I have a Fox Float DPX2. Eye to eye length is 230 mils. Stroke is 62.5 and rear wheel travel is 160. For 2021, they did upgrade the stroke length. Last year's bike was 60 mils and this year it's 62.5. And Kamasal said they did that to give better small bump compliancy. And compared to my 2018 Meta AM, you can actually feel it, so that's pretty good. And then also you have your firm, medium, and open settings, just like the uh, fork. All right, oh, water bottle. Does one fit? Yes! But under one condition, you install a wolf tooth B-Rad system. So this is an 18 ounce Fidlock bottle. And when I mounted this to the stock mounts right here, the top of the bottle would actually touch the bottom of the shock right here. But once when you install this B-Rad system, it allows you to lower the mounting points right here. So as you can see, that bottle fits totally fine with plenty of room. I actually put a uh, 20 ounce bottle and it fit totally fine too. You could probably even go bigger. So being able to fit um, a big bottle in a medium frame is awesome. All right, let's discuss the dropper post. The bike does come with a KS Lev dropper with 150 mils of travel. Um, I did upgrade because that wasn't enough travel for me. When I put the seat to the proper seat height for me and I dropped the seat, there was still too much seat post sticking out and the seat would get in the way. So I upgraded to a PMW Loam dropper post. And this has 200, or it's a 200 mil travel dropper post. 
and it, insertion length on this is 290 mils. So you can see where I have my seat, but if you want, you can actually drop this about another four to five millimeters before it bottoms out. And it does come with a WTB Silverado saddle, and this is an actually soft and really good saddle. So you won't have to upgrade that for sure. And then I kept the KS Lev dropper lever because it's a pretty good lever. And one of the upgrades I did was Dior XT shifter. All right, let's move below. We have SLX cranks. And then I went with DDT Mac pedals, pretty much the best pedals ever made. <laughs> I've ridden a lot of pedals from composite, aluminum, and I've even had magnesium pedals back in the day. And these are by far the best pedal I've ever ridden. They're concave, so they have a nice little pocket there for your foot. It's a pretty big platform. I have a size 11 shoe and this pedal fits me really well. Gives me plenty of support. And as you can see, it's got a lot of pins. <laughs> so this pedal is super sticky and it's made out of aluminum. So if you want a really good pedal, highly suggest this pedal, it's really good. Down below, I have a one-up bash guard with chain guide. Had one on my 2018 Meta AM and I really liked it, so I bought another one and installed it. And as far as frame protection, so we've got a bash guard right here. And for chain slap protection, we have some on the seat stay. I don't know if you can see that. Am I pointing that right here? Seat stay and down here on the chain stay. Cool thing about this chain slap protector, common cell going an extra mile here, is most bike manufacturers, they just give you a chain slap protector on, on top right here with the soft rubber. But common cell went the extra mile and actually put the soft rubber on the bottom. So why is that good? Well, when you're in these lower gears and you're going off big jumps and hitting drops and hitting some rough stuff, like all bikes, the chain will slap the bottom of the chain stay right here. But with that soft rubber, it keeps it nice and quiet. So you don't hear any chain slap on this bike at all. It's super quiet. Oh, and then cables are internally routed. You can see right here where they come out and they, um, these are little clamps that clamp the cables down so you don't get any cable rattle. And like I said, this bike is super quiet when you ride it. I guess we'll move on down here. Look at the SLX derailleur. Oh, and this does come with the 10 to 51 tooth cassette. And then there you can see the rear hub. Oh, and this frame is boost spacing. So um, 110 by 15 in the front and 148 12 in the rear. It's beautiful. Oh, one thing I want to mention is if you look at 2019 and 2020 bikes right here, there's a stiffening brace. And obviously for 2021, that's gone. And Common Sol said the reason for that was the use of dual row and duro bearings in their suspension system instead of the traditional single row bearing. And why is that good? Well, this dual row and duro bearing has a 35 to 40% higher load capacity. And that was achieved by using the maximum number of balls in the bearing. So cheap bearings, if you look, there's some space between the balls and that's not good. It causes weakness. Also, this bearing has a deeper race that the balls sit in, so you get a lot more lateral stiffness. That's what she said. <laughs> and also, this bearing also uses a dual lip seal that has a lot of pressure, so it keeps all the grease in and the dirt out. So these bearings are gonna last a long time on here. You don't have to worry about premature bearing wear or bearings blowing out early. Oh, one thing I wanna mention here too, is I don't know if you can see it. I'll post a picture of it, but there is a lock ring right here holding in the bearing. And on the clevis, the rocker link, and the lower chain stay or seat stay right here, they use those lock rings. And why is that good? Well, that lock ring is keeping the bearing in its seat properly, nice and tight. So if you get a bearing that has like the tolerances are slightly off, or if the tolerances are slightly off in the frame, or just from a lot of riding and wear, or you change out the bearings and you damage the seat, that bearing will kind of float inside the seat. And at times, and this has happened to me, the bearing will actually move out about half a mil to a mil. And if that happens, you end up getting a, a suspension system that binds and wears the bearing out quicker. So it's good that once again, Common Sol is trying to think about building a really robust bike. So shouldn't have any issues with suspension or at all or the, the bearings in there. 
because they're pretty much the best bearings you can buy for a suspension system right now in the market. Oh, uh, another thing, let's talk the frame material. This is made out of 6066 instead of the traditional 6061 that most bike manufacturers use. So with this 6066, you're gonna get a stronger frame. So once again, common salt going the extra mile to try to build a really robust bike. Oh, um, I did install the tailored right wrap kit on this, and this is the glossy finish. As you can see, it doesn't take away from the paint at all. It actually looks beautiful. And I highly suggest getting this ride wrap kit. It covers the whole bike and it's custom fit to this bike. And it's already, I've already had two issues where rocks have bounced off my frame, but if you look at the, the tape, it's protected it. So it ended up keeping it from getting it scratched. Here, I flipped the bike around so you guys can see the non-drive side. Oh, and one thing I also wanted to mention about this ride wrap is if you get it, don't worry about installing it. It's not that difficult. Just take your time. Like if you get the kit, just plan on the whole day installing it and just go really slow. The one thing that I did that helped me is I started on a small piece, like right here on the head tube, and I learned how to spray it and it also helped me get my solution cracked. Because when I first started it, I sprayed it and it would stick. So I ended up adding uh, two more drops or no, one more drop to my solution. And then the thing slid around perfectly to where I could get it right where it needs to be on the frame. And then you learn how to squeegee it properly. And after that, you do the next piece and it gets easier and easier. So don't be scared. You can do it, just take your time. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Oh, um, actually here, I'll let you take a look at the brakes. Uh, one thing I want to mention back here on the bike was people have asked about this brake rotor being super close to this brake line and it, have they ever touched? And the answer is no. I've had plenty of rides on this bike and it kind of tripped me out too when I first saw it. And I was checking the brake hose after each ride and there's not a single mark on it. So it's never touched. So don't be concerned about it. Um, another thing they changed for 2021 was the relocation of this rear caliper. So on the older Meta AMs, this caliper sat on the inside of this seat stay and it caused the bike to be really wide. On my 2018 Meta AM, I had issues, well not a lot of issues, but my, my heels did rub the, the seat stay a couple times on each ride. And now that it's relocated back here, they shrunk the bike down and it's actually way thinner and my heels haven't touched the chain stays once on either side. So that is a welcome change on this bike. And I think a lot of people that had the older bikes, if they knew about that, they would probably want to upgrade. All right. Oh, another thing I want to mention. If you look at last year's Rocker Link, the thing is so tiny compared to this year's. This thing has so much more material on it it's so beefy compared to last year's. So that's just another area there that common cells go on the extra mile to make the bike super strong, which I like. It's pretty much the theme of this bike is common cells making this thing a tank, man. It's super strong. Let's go over sizing since a lot of people ask that. Um, on 5.9, 32 inch inseam, and I ride a size medium. Um, I had a 2018 Meta AM in medium, and I actually think this fits me better. Um, so I would just go off common Saul's sizing chart. It seems to be pretty accurate. Though I did read one article that said if you are riding a large or extra large, try to size down if possible, because the bike has a large front center. And the reason for that is common Saul uses the same size rear triangle for all the different sized frames. So when you get into those large and extra large, you end up having that large front center. And they said in the article that it makes it difficult to weight the front tire and turns. I don't know how true that is. I ride a size medium and I haven't noticed it at all, but I don't have a large front center on this bike. I have talked to a couple people that have that size bike, the large and extra large, and they said they've never noticed it. But I thought I would just mention it because it was something I read in an article. Let's kind of go over the geo numbers too, because a lot of people ask about that. So let's start with the head tube angle. That is 63.6. Yes, that is very slack. And I kind of tripped out about it too when I first saw it. I was like, holy moly, that's slack. That's like downhill bike slack. Um, with that said, the bike does have a 44 mil offset. So once when I got on the bike and started riding it, it didn't feel sluggish. It still felt kind of snappy for a 29er. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that head tube angle. They kind of fixed it with that 44 mil offset. Oh, one thing I love about this bike is the seat tube angle. 78.5, super steep. 
that keeps you centered in the bike, right over the bottom bracket. You're able to utilize the proper muscles. Oh, and by the way, I'll put a link in the description about um, the benefits of a uh, super steep seat tube. I suggest reading it, it's pretty cool. But like I said, it keeps you right over that bottom bracket. Also, when you're climbing, you're not way over that back tire. So you get a lot of weight on the front. So the bike true or tracks nice and true and it doesn't wander during steep climbs. Um, let's see, top tube is 600. Yes, 600 millimeters, that's huge, right? Well, actually it isn't because the bike does have that super steep seat tube angle. So it actually shrinks the cockpit a lot. So I kind of tripped out on that too, but once when I sat on the bike and realized like, wow, it actually fits pretty good. So the reach on this bike is 470 millimeters. So it's not that bad. Like again, chainstay length is 433 and that's on all size bikes. And wheelbase is 1258. So I actually love this bike, the way it rides. The thing is just a missile and climbs really well with that seat tube angle. Well, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, just shoot them down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching. Peace. I just ride in my bed.